Welcome to Blockonomics. In this tutorial, we are going to see about how to integrate payment widgets in our website. For that case, we have created a news paywall website which has two types of news. One is the free news and another one is the premium content. The free news is available for all the users but the premium content will be available only for the users who pay $10 using bitcoins. So when I pay $10 using bitcoin, the page automatically reloads and the user can see the premium news. Let us see in detail about the payment widget and the difference between the payment button and the payment widget and after that let us see how to integrate it in our code. So payment widget is nothing but an HTML element which can be embedded in any part of our HTML code. The payment widget element consists of three main things the Bitcoin value and the Bitcoin address to which it should be transferred and then the time limit. As you can see, the difference between the payment button and the payment widget is shown on the screen. The payment widget provides us more flexibility in the terms of design and customer fields than the payment button. Our website is built using Django framework. I hope everyone watching this have some basic knowledge about Django framework. So our project name is News Paywall and we have a folder called as news paywall inside which you can see the main configuration files of this particular project for example the settings.py in settings.py it contains all the settings configuration that is required to run this project and then i have created two apps namely authentication and news article so the authentication app manages all the urls and views that are required for authentication for example login logout register etc and the news article contains all the important information about the news like the title content so let us look into authentication app as you can see in the models.py we have used the django's default uh, user model by modifying the email field and removing the username field from the model and after that we have added a premium status field which is the important one for our website so the premium status takes four values namely minus one zero one and two so the minus one represents there is a payment error which means the paid btc is not to the expected value and zero is unpaid the default value will be zero for all the users so zero is for the non-premium users and one if the payment is in process and 2 is confirmed so 2 is for the premium members so that is all about the custom user model so now let us look into the news article app in news article we have created single model that is the database table which is also named as news article so this particular table it contains four fields this premium content field is very much important because this only identifies whether the news is a premium news or a non-premium news and next we have the media folder inside which we uh, contain all the medias like uh, the images which are necessary for the news and uh, and for the background images etc so next we are going to see about the templates uh, in in templates or uh, templates are nothing but the html files which will render in the front end so in templates we have a uh, Two folders namely auth and dashboard and uh, we also have a base.html and header.html because uh, we have just created a base for all the html files we are using so that we can inherit that base file in each of our html files so when you see the login page.html it is a common sign in page which asks for email id and password and then we have the sign up page which asks the user to fill the sign up form when we look into the freenews.html, it is the home page of our uh, website, which is the dashboard, because uh, the free news will be available for all the users to log in into the website. Then we also have a read more button, which calls the read more URL with a custom parameter of PK. PK is nothing but the primary key of the news. So by this way, by clicking on the read more, we are redirecting the user to another page where you can read about the news article in detail 
Next, let us see about the premium news.html which can be accessed from the navigation bar. So inside the premium news.html, you can see a if clause that uh, if the user's premium status is 2, that is if the user has paid for the premium status, then we are rendering the news list here. Else if the premium status is 1, which means the payment is in process, we are telling the user that the payment is still in the printing state and if he wants to cancel the process, he can cancel the process and start the payment again. And inside the else block, uh, we have an, another if block uh, like an instead if. So if the premium state is minus one, that is uh, if the payment error occurs when the Bitcoin amount did not match the expected value, uh, we are just uh, showing the user a text in red color. And below that, uh, we'll be telling the user to buy the premium feature for $10. And also we have a button in there and on click on this button, uh, we have written a JavaScript function, which you can see below. So inside the pay function, you can see we have used blockonomics.widget, which is the syntax of creating the payment widget in our HTML code. So it takes importantly three parameters. One is the message area inside which the payment widget should be rendered. And next one is the UID, which you will get on creating a product in the merchants page and then the email to identify which user has made the payment so in our case we are just passing the user's email here because we already have a user's email in our database so by this way the user won't be needed to enter his email id once again once the function is called the payment widget will get rendered in the area in which we have provided so the payment area is nothing but id of a div which i have provided just below the button so the payment widget gets rendered inside this div by this way you can embed this payment widget in any part of your html code for using this blockonomics.widget function you need to mainly include a javascript library provided by the blockonomics in base.html, you can see I have included a script which is provided by the Blockonomics. Blockonomics provides us a very useful function known as Blockonomics Payment Callback, which can be used to reload the page to fetch the data again from the backend once the payment has been made or to check whether the payment has made or not. So here I am checking if the payment status is 2. And I'm just reloading the page after three seconds so that I can fetch the data again of the user's premium status that has been updated. By this way, the user can able to see the premium news once his payment has been confirmed. Let us see how the backend gets updated once the user has made his payment. For this case, the Blockonomics has provided the webhook URLs. We need to specify the URL which needs to be called once the payment has been made or once the payment has started. So in our case, I have given the URL as payment webhook, which I have mentioned in the Blockonomics website. So you can see here, I have mentioned the payment webhook URL in the merchant page in payment buttons and links option. So when this webhook URL is called, it directly goes into the payment webhook view. When you see this view, the request method would be get. So if it is not get, we are just returning it. So in the get request, we would be getting the status, the UUID and uh, the address and we will be getting many more, much more things. But now we need only the status and the UUID. So we have got the status and store it in our status variable. We have got the status, but we don't know which user has made the payment because we won't be getting any email ID field or uh, any field related to the user in the webhook URL. For that case, we need to use the UUID and make an API call to the Blockonomics, which will in return provide us the details of the user who has made the payment. For example, in our case, the email ID. So in response, we will be getting the email ID. 
I'm getting the response. I'm using that email ID to get the particular user who has made the payment. I'm an, and then I'm updating the premium status of the user to the status which I have received and I'm saving it in the database. So that is how we need to handle the payment webhook which is provided by the Blockonomics. So uh, that is all about the demo. Uh, I hope you guys have got a clear understanding of the payment widget and the website that I have created. So the source code link and uh, other important links are uh, provided in the description below. So you can use them. And uh, don't forget to visit our Twitter and uh, Reddit pages which are linked in the description. If you have any queries related to this demo, you can put them in the comment section and we will reach out to you as soon as possible and uh, good to go keep using blockonomics see you later bye bye